Welcome, everyone. This is Paint Along, the Fellowship of the Ring with Squire Pet, the future Bob Ross of Bellegarth. This class runs until 5 p.m. This class is being recorded and will be available on YouTube at a later date. I'm sure Squire Pet will be happy to chat with you more about the topic in the Bifter Discord in the Arts and Sciences channel if you have more questions after the class. Take it away, Squire Pet. Hello, um, I'm Squire Pet or Carla. Um, and today, uh oh, oh, all right, yes, today we're doing a paint along for the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, so uh, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need something to paint on. Um, I see some of you have uh, notebooks. Um, very cool. We're going to be using uh, three colors today. We're using white, we're using black, and we're using blue. If you have like a primary blue, that's going to work the best. Um, you can also throw in different shades of blue to whatever um, works for you. We're going to do uh, a few shades of blue and then white and black. Um, you're going to want uh, a few different brushes. For your background, um, you're going to want a flat brush. Um, I like to use one inch. Um, sometimes I'll use like a one and a half just to get more coverage. You're also going to want a fan brush. I know that not everybody has a fan brush. So um, if you have an old ugly brush, that will also work well, uh, old ugly flat brush, but because it's old and ugly, it's not that flat. <laughs> um, and then you're going to also need some brushes that will help you with your detail. So nice and fine um, detail. Hey, Pet, can you adjust your camera just a little bit? You're a little fuzzy. I'm fuzzy? Yeah. I think that's an, I think I have an awful camera. <laughs> oh, okay. Just check. Yeah. <laughs> As you were. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, d is anybody here not familiar with painting in general? No? Okay. So I won't go over too many basic things. Um, I'm going to assume you understand um, how like your palette works and, and mixing colors. Um, but definitely let me know if you need me to snow down, if you need me to talk about. Carla. Hi, that's my mom. Um, if you want me to talk about how much uh, um, paint you're going to want on your brush, um, definitely ask me questions. All right. So we're going to start with, oh, there's my other one, a blank, obviously. And we're going to start with the background. So we're going to do the background up until about 75% down. You're going to want a, like a gradient going on, so from a really light light, almost white, blue, down to a really light blue. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. White, a little bit of white. So I start by mixing the colors on my palette. I'm going to want at least three different shades of, of a real, real light blue. Remember, this is a sky, and we're doing a snowstorm. So you want your sky to be real light blue, almost white. I'm going to take my first color. 
and I'm just gonna drag it across, okay? For the sky, you wanna make sure that you are dragging your brush horizontally. Some people like to, you know, fill in their space as quickly as possible and they do weird angles. But you just wanna be gentle and you want to move back and forth. And once I've done a line of that color, I'm gonna move on to try and make a, a darker light blue, but still very light blue. You're dragging that back and forth. And you can drag it up to the area that you've already done. And then I'll make a, a third blue that's still a very light blue, but darker than the one you just did. And again, we only need to go about 75% of the way down. And then what I like to do from here is I like to get my brush wet, wipe it on a paper towel so it's only a little bit wet, and then just go across the entire thing. And this will help uh, blend in your colors you'll see your paintbrush picking up um, the different shades of blue. Go down a couple times, then up. So you get a real nice blend. And then let me know when you're ready for the next step. Everybody give me a thumbs up when you're ready and I'll know.
I also want to remind everybody that if you're a little bit um, camera shy or mic shy, you need the chat feature. And uh, our moderator today is Journey Manalina. And so Journey Manalina will um, make sure uh, she has eyes on the chat and your questions get answered. I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, I see we have most people ready. So next you're going to take um, like a primary blue and I'm using a, a small flat detail brush um, to just plan out where I want my mountains to be. Okay, and this is your painting. Your mountains don't look like mine. In fact, they shouldn't look like mine. Um, you paint your mountains as you want to, as you see fit. Um, so I'm going to do one here. And then maybe this. All right, and if that's how you like it, then you'll go back to your flat brush and you'll color it down. We're still gonna have um, black here. So you don't have to paint your mountains all the way down. Um, but you do have to you know, give them some filling in.
for the next step, you're going to want these mountains to be dry. So I'm going to give my painting a couple more minutes. Maybe not minutes, but a minute. Uh, because I want at least this blue to be mostly dry. And go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you've done with this step. Let's see, one, two. Okay, all right. So the next thing to um, think about is that mountains aren't pyramids. Um, they're going to have a little more personality than that, and their um, edges aren't going to be straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a light blue. I'm using the same thing I did with the, with the sky. You're going to cover up this light blue eventually, so don't worry too much about what shade it needs to be. But I'm going to go to the center of all of my mountains. And I'm going to make a nice squiggly line down each of them to show me where this mountain twists and curves because it's not it's not going to be a straight line down. It's going to be more more mountain like. All right, so now you have to decide two things. You have to decide where your light source is coming from. Is it coming from this side down here or this side down here? Um, I like to, because in, in English, uh, you read left to right. Most people whose uh, l first language is English, it makes more sense to, to do things left to right. So I have the Fellowship of the Ring traveling to the right. Um, and because of symbolism, I have my sun coming to the left so that they are walking towards more sun. Um, however you want to do this, that's up to you. This is your scene. This is your world. Um, but I, I, for this one, I've decided my sun comes from the right to the left. Okay, the other thing you have to decide is um, what mountains are in front of what other mountains. Um, in this one, you can see that I have this one in front of this one, in front of this one, in front of this one, in front of this one. Um, 
some of the other students when I've taught this class have put the middle one up at front. Um, so, you know, in your head, just decide which mountain is in front. Um, and you're going to take your fan brush or you can take a really bent out of shape flat brush and you're going to make a color that is lighter than this that is darker than this primary blue so let's let's try to do that So I'm, I've got this nice, ooh, I've got this nice navy going on here. I want to make sure my, my paintbrush isn't overly saturated. And I'm going to start, which with whatever mountain is up front, let's say this one. And I'm going to go, take this all the way down. Can you see that? No, I need to make this blue darker. And you're not going to want to try and fill it in. You're just like just brushing it on so that you can still see some of the, the primary blue underneath it. Nope, it still needs to be darker. Like so. Okay, so I've decided that mountain was in front, and then I'll do um, this mountain is in front of that one. I'll do this mountain. And I've decided that this mountain is in front of this mountain, so I won't mess with that line, I'll try and fill it in like that. Does that make sense to everybody? What we're doing right now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay, thank you. Um, and your line that you put down the center, that's your kind of guide for wh what is what is in the shade, what isn't in the shade. And you don't want to be restricted by the line you already made, the, that's those squiggle lines. They're more of a guide and, you know, you got to let the, the painting reveal itself, let's say. Um, so what do we do on the other side? Well, we're going to make a color that is lighter, slightly lighter than this primary blue we, we just did. So let's do, and you're going to do the same thing that you did to the other side with this lighter blue. Something I like to do, I regularly do when I'm painting, is I like to do a couple steps and take my hands off, take a few steps back, 
because most of the time when you're when your art is being admired it is not being admired from three inches away it's being admired from you know 10 15 feet and so you want to step back you want to look at it does it make sense um and oftentimes like of course everybody are, are is their own worst critic especially if you're looking at it right up close so take a step back you might want to take some of your detail brushes to fix some of the the lines you're not happy with And to make the snow effect, um, you're going to want to mix white with the color that you made for either side and just add it to the top. Uh, like, there we go. I have some white. This is the color I use for the dark side of the mountain. Make sure my paintbrush isn't too wet. And then I'm going to just hit the top of that mountain with, the, with that color on the dark side. And you can decide if your mountains are more or less snowy. And I'm going to do the same thing to the light side of the mountain. And you can decide um, how snowy these mountains are going to be. Um, this scene that I am 
trying to depict is from the Fellowship of the Ring, and it is uh, when they're trying to cross some mountains, and Sauron is creating this this blizzard to obstruct them. So I think it's kind of snowy, but that's up to you. How much snow you want on your mountain? I might go back and, you know, clean up some lines here and there. Um, but in general, you don't want to be too precise when you're making nature because nature is not precise. <laughs> And just like with any art, you'll get better and better the more you do it. So definitely keep practicing. If you're happy with it, if you're not happy with what you've done, keep practicing. That's the only way to get better at anything. And give me a thumbs up when your mountains are ready. I see Elena. <laughs> it's okay if you need your time.
And for the next part, you're going to do the foreground. Okay. Um, in this in this version, I did a lot of uh, black in the foreground. That's up to you. In my next version, I did a little bit less. But you're going to want to add the ground in which the fellowship is going to be walking. In this one, I decided that for symbolism's sake, um, they were going to be walking up um, towards the light. Um, but really, this is up to you. They can be walking straight across. They can be walking down. Um, I think their goal was just to make it through the mountains. Um, they weren't necessarily trying to climb any to the top. Um, so I'm going to take my black. I'm taking my flat brush. And I'm hitting the bottom of this. Just like we did the sky, we're going to do, we're going to focus on doing horizontal strokes. And at least the black that I'm working with, I need uh, a couple of, what's the word? Coats. We're going to need a couple of coats of this black because I did not buy the good stuff. <laughs> How am I on time? 3.45, nice. One hour and 15 minutes. Great, great. <laughs> Ish. <laughs>
Um, I just want to do a, a side comment. Um, Queenie, uh, Elena is my mom. Mom? This Hello. Is my this is my friend Queenie. Hello, Miss Elena. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Hello from Dallas, Arlington, Texas. Hi, <laughs> Mom. Hi, Mom. Uh, I just wanted to make that introduction. I feel like you two would be very good friends. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you've, and and my you've mom moved away. No, oh, my mom. My mom's visiting uh, my cousin, but okay. she's normally she's normally in San Diego. Que Queenie's from San Diego. Right. Hi. Oh, hi. Maybe maybe post post COVID we could do something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Assume, yeah. If we're in the same there area. Will be a, I assume there will be a battle of Andor oh. where. No. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right. It was it was scheduled two days before the lockdown. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I like to paint rocks. Okay. Um. Do you leave them around San Diego? Yes. Do you like where where have you left the rocks before? I pick them up at the beach on Coronado. Yeah. Okay. They're free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of rocks. I live uh, like uh, a mile away from the border. Okay, San Ysidro. Yeah. I'm in La Mesa right now. I just moved from National City. Oh. Ah. Yeah, but I have two children around here somewhere. They're probably watching a movie, but. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, everybody give me a thumbs up if you're ready. All yeah. right. Thanks, Carla. Yeah, I love you, Mom. Uh, so next, we're going to work on the fellowship. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. I have a PowerPoint. Um, I know that painting people is definitely very daunting for, for every everyone. Um, luckily, today we're doing silhouettes. And so you can break down the following people into basic shapes. Um, so I'm going to share my PowerPoint. Can everybody see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we've gotten to here, basically. So uh, for where's the finished? Hmm. So can anybody tell me how many people were in the fellowship? Um, <laughs> okay, it's okay. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there were nine people in the fellowship. Um, some people like to include the donkey in the fellowship, or the pony, I should say, the pony in the fellowship, so that would be 10. But there are nine in the fellowship and a pony. So something some of my students did last time that was really helpful was they pre-planned where everybody's heads will be, okay? Or maybe you can mark it uh, in some way on your board. Maybe with, with white, you'll cover up later. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, you can see in this one, I definitely did not do that ahead of time. So these last two people are def are overlapping, um, which is its own design choice that you're more than welcome to do. But um, 
I also had other people in my class get too worried they were going to run out of space and all their people were like in the front. So definitely think about that. There are going to be nine people and a pony. First, leading the fellowship is Gandalf. Gandalf is made of a few different shapes. Um, he's like a circle and a rectangle and he has this like triangular um, sleeve. He has a staff and he has his iconic hat. After I took this picture, I also added a beard and some hair. Um, that's up to you. You can add um, as much or as little detail to your silhouettes as, as you want. As long as it communicates what you want it to communicate, then that's perfect. Actually, excuse me, I'm going to, for a second, just copy this link, and then I'm going to send it to Alina so that you can share it wherever it needs to go. And then I'll also, I'll also drop it into the chat so that if I go too fast or too slow, you can access the PowerPoint and move accordingly. Let's see. Where's chat? Chat, chat, chat. Chat. All right, if you'd like to open that up on your own device, that is more than fine. I'm going to go ahead and move past Gandalf. After Gandalf, I have little Frodo. Little Frodo is a hobbit. So he is probably about a third of the size of Gandalf. Gandalf canonically can change his height. So I always assume that he's very tall. Um, Frodo is a head, a body. The little backpack.
after Frodo, we have Legolas. And Legolas is a little more complicated because Legolas has his bow and arrow, his bow and his quiver full of arrows. Um, so this is how I imagined Legolas. He's a head, he's a body, he's a couple legs. Um, the bow is uh, curved shaped like, like so. And I imagine he has it in both his hands, he's ready. And he also has a quiver on his back with a number of arrows. Um, after this picture was taken, I also added hair on Legolas since um, at least in the movie, he has like long, beautiful blonde hair. Um, it definitely took out some of the details from the quiver, but I wasn't very happy with how my quiver turned out, so it was fine. Whoops. Whoops. Not what I'm trying to do. All right, so after Legolas is Gimli, son of Gloin. He's a dwarf, so he's going to be a little bit chonkier than the uh, hobbits, um, and a little bit taller than the hobbits, but he's definitely a shorty himself. And um, when I drew this, I made his axe a little too hammer shaped, but he has an axe. Um, and I imagine that he just carries that right on his shoulder and he's ready. So he's a head, he's a body, an arm carrying a big old axe.
And then after Gimli is going to be um, Merry and Pippin. And Merry and Pippin are two hobbits. Um, so they're going to be similar to Frodo. I did these in two different styles. You can decide which style you want, both, neither. You can do your own. Uh, their heads, their bodies, they have their hoods on. And uh, I imagine their legs in two different positions. Um, you can choose whichever one you want. Uh, I tend to favor the one on the right, personally. It looks more fluid. And again, these are, Merry and Pippin are hobbits, so they're definitely going to be much shorter than uh, Gandalf and Legolas, and just slightly shorter than Gimli, the guy with the axe. And then after these two dudes, you have um, you have Boromir. Boromir is a human, so you can see in this picture that he's taller than the hobbits. Um, and he is a head. He's a body. He has a sword at his side, and I put a shield on his back. Um, if I could go back in time. Um, I would definitely put like his hand on a pommel, um, although some people in my last class said it might look inappropriate. Uh, their, their pictures turned out a little questionable. Um, so uh, however you want to do this, he's a head, he's a body, he's a sword, and a shield. If you have a real fine detail brush, you could also make this sword real pointy at it at its end. Um, I think that if I could if I could go back in time, I'd use a finer brush and make the swords pointier. I'd make Gandalf's staff look a little bit more like his staff in the movie. Um, but again, like I always say, the only way you get better at something is to practice it a lot. So this wasn't the best I could do, but it was the first time I was doing it. So you, know, you always can improve from there. After Boromir is going to be Samwise and the pony. I don't remember what the pony's name is. Um, and then 
last but not least is Aragorn. Um, and he is just like Boromir. He's going to be a head, a body, a shield, and a sword. So here is the last bit. Um, the pony's a little bit difficult, but I tried my best to turn them into shapes. Um, again, uh, Samwise is a hobbit, so he's going to be a little bit shorter. And uh, Aragorn is a human, so he's going to be shorter than Gandalf, but just as tall as Boromir um, or Legolas. How's it looking? I see Elena already cleaning up. Uh, Saber, how you doing? Thumbs up? Good? Not ready yet. How about Queenie? Queenie's ready. Elena looking good. Nice. Okay, so we're going, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to, uh, here we go. I'm going to show you the last step. So in some of my pictures, you could see these snow spots. OK, some are bigger than the others, but there's snow spots everywhere. The way we're going to do this is, Gary, you're going to actually lay your piece down. OK. You're going to take like an old flat brush and white. I'm going to put white on my flash, my flat brush, but I'm also going to take some of it off like a paper towel. I don't want, I don't want this too wet or else you'll get big, big chunky pieces like this. Okay, so you want to make sure that you don't have too many, too much paint on your brush. You're going to take this brush, you're going to hold it over your painting, you're going to take another brush or something large, and you're going to smack it. Smack, smack, smack. Smack, 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 smack. Smack, 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 smack. Okay. And you can do this as much or as little as you want, but it ends up with these droplets. And also droplets kind of everywhere. Um, yeah, and have fun with that step, because that step is definitely fun. 
And of course, once you're done, once you're happy with it, make sure to sign it. You can sign it at the corner, which is traditional. You can sign it on the back. You can sign it wherever you want. But if you're proud of it, put your name on it. <laughs> uh, Alina, is there going to be anywhere where uh, people can post pictures of their finished work? Um, good question. I think not specifically, but probably my best guess would be in the arts and sciences channel on the bifter server or i can ask for a channel to be set up by one of the people that know how to do that <laughs> i am not savvy <laughs> yeah that's okay it feels like it feels like this kind of event like nobody's really done extensively so like everybody who's doing online events are learning how to do online events at the same time yes um so um elena kuma beth ann saber hopefully i'll get in contact with queenie hi um you can post uh your finished paintings on the arts and sciences thread you can also pm me um on the discord i'm going to be squire pet on facebook i'm going to be carla de la rosa um, and i can make sure that those get uploaded share um let's see bye mom don't forget to bye. send me a picture mom oh love it Oop, love it. Saber looks good. Elena looking good. my three favorites. You only did your favorites? <laughs> yeah. I was say, that looks I, very cool. I got Elena. That's a super fun. Let's do it again. Yes, we'll do it again, Mom. I love you. Love you. Um, Beth Ann, you were saying something? Oh, I got a little hung up on... Um, on Gandalf and so the rest of them didn't quite I was I was doing digital painting oh okay awesome um so it said that I needed to be given access to the what you oh, had shared in the chat okay let's see um, if I can fix that for you so when whenever that's available I'll go in and finish okay let's see. the rest of them let's see Share the link.
anyone with link can view. Okay, copy. So like, I'm really happy with the. With yeah, Gandalf. Gandalf looks very good. Okay, I'm posting a new link. Hopefully that works. Let me know if it does. Did that work out for you, Beth Ann? Yes, it did. Sorry, I was muted okay. and then trying to look at it. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. In my attempt to cut down on my time, I actually cut down like 45 minutes. <laughs> um, so that's what I have for you. Thanks everybody for showing up. Don't forget to send a picture, show it off to your friends, um, especially um, if it's in the Battle for the Ring Discord. Um, I am Squire Pet. Uh, I like to think of myself as the future Bob Ross of Bellegarth. So expect to see more of these paint alongs. Thank you. Uh, if you want to stop recording, Alina, now would be a good time. <laughs> Thank you, Squire Pet. All right, I am stopping the recording. Uh...